Hey, what is up mortals? It is Melissa here with a new video for you. In this video, we'll dive into Bondo from the Elf and Lead anime. I just wanted to greet you guys by saying, just sit back and relax, you're in for a treat. So let's get started. Elf and Lead's anime adaptation left out a lot of important characters and backstory from the manga. There is one prominent character that is portrayed in an extremely shallowed fashion in the anime, but who goes through the most character development in the manga. It's probably no character you would ever guess. No, not one of the Diclonius. The story's anti-hero, Bondo. Yeah, that guy. In this video, we'll take a look at his appearance in the anime, and then go into everything left out from the manga. Bondo's first appearance in the anime is the first episode. After Lucy escapes from the Diclonius Research Institute, a team of soldiers is sent to retrieve her. One of these soldiers is Bondo, who is infamous for being an extremely aggressive, apathetic killing machine. He is seen in a simulated training facility and shows his sadistic nature by shooting down the civilians along with the enemies. He doesn't care when he is scolded for not taking his training seriously, but is one of the best soldiers the research can use. They give him the order to find and kill Lucy, which he responds to enthusiastically. His apathy is shown when a secretary walks up behind him and he backhands her, telling her she should know better than to stand behind him. The facility sends out the squads and Bondo doesn't get along with his teammates. When he expresses excitement at being able to kill a teen girl, the others are disgusted by him. He puts a gun on one of them when he doesn't condone Bondo's attitude. He pulls the trigger, but the gun is empty, showing he doesn't care about people he works with either. While being brief, the soldiers are only told that the target possesses powerful weapons but are never specified to them. Bondo refuses to follow orders and instead demands he hunt for her without restrictions. He searches the beach with a young soldier named Sato, who wonders what the secret weapon could be. Bondo threatens to take him out if he doesn't stop talking. They spot Lucy as new, just as Kota arrives to retrieve her. Bondo hits him in the back of the head with his gun and deliberates how to take out Lucy along with the witness. Sato reminds him they don't have orders to kill any civilians, but Bondo continues to threaten Kota. Kota tries to run away with Nyu, but is stopped when Bondo targets them with his gun. He kicks Kota to the ground, knocking him out. While incapacitated, Bondo and Sato drag Nyu to a military base. When Sato calls the information in, Bondo knocks him out and smashes the walkie-talkie, wanting to torment and fight Nyu. He attempts to antagonize her, but becomes annoyed when she doesn't react aggressively. He hits her in the head with his gun one more time, unaware that this awakens Lucy. Bored with their target, he tells Sato to kill her instead. When lighting a cigarette, back turned to them, Bondo doesn't see Lucy gouge a hole into Sato's stomach. When he turns back around, he witnesses her tearing off all of Sato's limbs with her vectors, causing a shower of blood. He begins firing at her, now seeing her as a threat, but none of his bullets hit her. She begins a game of cat and mouse, while avoiding her attacks and watching what she does, Bondo pieces together that her secret weapon is her ability to use vectors, the invisible hands. He recalls the briefing earlier that said she only had a two meter radius. He aims his gun at her from two meters away, only to realize that she now wields Seto's gun. She shoots him down and takes him down to the beach. She stands over him, asking if he's enjoying their fight. He grabs his gun to shoot her, but she tears his arm off. He reaches his other hand out towards her, which she responds to by breaking his arm. He threatens her by saying he will never forget her face, and she gouges his eyes out. His threats don't stop even after that, and she decides to choke him to death. She turns back into Newt before finishing him off and runs away. Bondo is left to die on the beach, but is found by a young girl named Mayu. She stops the bleeding on his arm before going to call an ambulance. He is taken to a facility hospital in critical condition, where he is told he will need to be sterilized. When Lucy attacked him, her vectors infected his DNA, which will cause any future children of his to be born as a Diclonius. Bondo doesn't show up again until the sixth episode, having recovered with body modifications. He's given artificial eyes and a prosthetic arm that can move its fingers and handle 50 kilograms of weight. Before the doctor can perform the sterilization surgery, Bondo punches him out and breaks through a window, escaping. He returns to the beach and is approached by Mayu, who says she's glad he's okay. He recognizes her voice and is shocked that a child saved him. He asks her what she wants in return for saving him and gives her his phone number when she declines to ask for anything. He tells her that she can call him if she ever needs help and he will kill anyone she needs him to. Before he walks away, he asks her if she knows anything about Lucy. Mayu asks if he is referring to Nyu, and he becomes enraged. 
He grabs her by her shirt collar and threatens to kill her unless she tells him everything she knows. She tries to play dumb, but he slaps her across the face, saying he has no qualms about killing women or children. Mayu holds up the piece of paper with his phone number to his confusion. She tells him that she's in trouble and needs help, that he said he would save her if she needed him to. Not wanting to go back on his word, Bondo reluctantly releases Mayu, telling her he doesn't want to see her ever again. He comes across Nana on the beach and holds her at gunpoint when noticing her horns. He threatens her for information on Lucy, shooting her when she walks away, refusing to fight. He questions her more about Lucy, shooting her again when she recognizes the description. He belittles her existence, reducing her to tears, then enraged and ready to fight. He antagonizes her and aims his gun at her. She uses a dummy hand to hit him in the face and knock the gun to the ground. He pulls out a hidden gun and tries to shoot her in the face, but misses. He relents when Nana starts crying, and they discover they are both looking to kill Lucy. Nana offers to work together, but Bondo refuses. He attempts to give her his cell phone number, but she doesn't know what it is. Instead, he tells her to come find him at the beach if she senses Lucy nearby. They appear to become allies, but Nana shows her mischievous side by offering to help him stand up and dislocates her fake arm, causing him to fall. He doesn't appear again until the 10th episode after Mariko is released. He's shown cleaning up the beach and that his artificial hand is having issues. Kurama approaches him, offering to fix it if he kills an unspecified Diclonius, most likely Mariko. True to his word, Kurama fixes Bondo's arm and they use a speedboat to find Mariko. They arrived at the bridge where a final standoff occurs and Bondo starts firing, then chases after Lucy to kill her. She fights him and wins, leaving him bloody but alive in the sand and tells him he won't see her ever again. The anime ends without any real conclusion to Bondo's fate. In the manga, his introduction is similar. He's one of the top performers for the SAT, special assault team, but has an insane bloodthirsty personality. Like in the anime, he refuses to continue training because he wants to kill living people and backhands a secretary who walks up behind him. While flying with the other squad members to where Lucy is last spotted, Bondo is extremely excited to kill a minor and threatens to kill anyone else who tries to take her out before him. His group is originally assigned to patrol the town, but he demands another group trade with him so he can cover the beach. His reason for doing so is that he is familiar with cities and wants to start his missions in areas that are unknown to him. When Kota finds Newt, Yuka is with them and is the one to get knocked out by the Bud Bondo's gun. When Kota tries to fight off Bondo, he is also knocked out. He attacks Nyu, but gets annoyed with her not fighting back, and hits her in the head like the others. He gives Sato the order to kill her since it's not fun for him anymore. As Lucy, she rips a hole through Sato's abdominal area and tears off his arm and head with her vectors. When Bondo tries to attack after coming up with a plan, she still shoots him with Sato's gun. She tears off his arm, breaks the other, gouges out his eyes, and almost chokes him to death before turning back into Nyu and running away. Mayu again is the one who finds him and ties the sleeve of his shirt before calling an ambulance. Bondo is next seen in the hospital where he is still in critical condition with gauze over his eyes. Kurama tells Bondo he will only live if he agrees to the surgery to be sterilized, but does not say why he needs it. He is given artificial limbs but still has gauze over his eyes and can't see. Kota and Nyuka take Nude to the local college and she runs away, bumping into Bondo, who is there with an agent. He recognizes her voice when she says, Nye. He grabs her by the throat and tries to feel for her horns. Students around them begin adding new to their sentences to confuse Bondo, and he lets go of her. Enraged, he slips and falls backwards onto the ground, having his fake limbs pop off. The students around him begin to mock him and laugh. Even angrier now, he threatens to kill everyone around him. When he's calmed down, he is taken to see Professor Kakuzawa, who may have information on how he can avoid the surgery. Kakuzawa informs Bondo that the surgery is necessary due to him being infected with the Diclonius virus. Distressed, Bondo asks if he will ever be able to have kids and that he wants to be a father. Kakuzawa tells him he can have children, but all of them will be born with horns. Bondo grabs him by the shirt collar and begins yelling at him, receiving a punch to the face from the professor. He says there is a way to avoid the surgery via a vaccine he is currently developing. Kakuzawa offers a proposal to Bondo. He will report that he injected Bondo with the vaccine, but asks in return for him to have as many children as possible to spread the virus. Kakuzawa wants to see how humanity evolves if Diclonius become the majority. Bondo immediately refuses and says he will kill Lucy before she can be used to set this plan into action. 
When asked to choose between getting the surgery or spreading the virus, he stays silent. When he returns with the agent, he says there wasn't even a choice to make between them. When he returns to the hospital, he is outfitted with a bionic arm and artificial eyes. Similar to the anime, when he is offered the sedatives before the surgery, he punches out the doctor. However, this time, he calmly walks out of the room. An agent stops him and informs him that Lucy has escaped. Bondo tells him he will find Lucy again and return after doing so, sarcastically adding he'll write an apology afterward. The agent reluctantly allows him to leave. Now vengeful against Lucy for ruining his life, Bondo vows to find her and kill her as violently as possible. Mayu is already at the beach, playing with Wanta, when Bondo returns to it. She notices him as he gets irritated that the beach has trash everywhere. She approaches him and expresses her happiness that he has recovered from when she found him. He doesn't recognize her and elbows her out of the way, almost walking off an edge above the water that he can't see. She screams at him to stop, which is when he recognizes her voice. He becomes irritated that a small girl saved him and asks if she's come back to him to ask him for a favor. Despite saying she was only happy he was okay and doesn't want anything, Bondo gives her his phone number. He tells her he will show up and kill anyone who's giving her a hard time, but only once. Before leaving, he asks Mayo if she knows anything about a girl with horns. She asks if he's talking about Nyu, and he grabs her by the collar of her shirt, demanding information. Mayu mentions a professor at the college taking her away, which infuriates Bondo, and he drops her onto the sand. He asks how she knows all of this, and she lies by saying that her older brother told her about it. He slaps her across the face, calling her out on the lie, and saying he'll have no problem killing her if she keeps lying. She holds up his phone number and says she needs help. He initially refuses to accept that until she implies he's not a man of his word. He throws her down again and screams at her that he doesn't want to ever see her again. As Mayu walks away, Bondo hides behind a nearby shack, watching her. He expresses relief at her not being too hurt, but runs off when she turns around and sees him, wondering why he cares if she's hurt or not. After Nana is sent out in a container by Kurama, Bondo is seen picking up trash on the beach and appreciating the nice weather. He sees the container and watches as Nana rises out of it. He notices her horns and begins to question her about Lucy, saying he will kill her if she gives bad answers. She doesn't show any fear towards him, which encourages him to shoot her. He tells her that he knows the secrets of the Vectors. She won't have the upper hand if she chooses to fight him. Nana claims she doesn't know who he is talking about, and he shoots her again, saying he'll keep doing it until she tells him. When she begins crying, he belittles her species, saying that they need to be exterminated and he will be the one to do it. Nana becomes enraged and attempts to fight him. He keeps his distance and draws her further down the beach where she can't throw anything at him. She uses her prosthetic arm to shoot and hit him in the face. He pulls out a hidden pistol and aims at her head, but misses. Nana starts crying again and notices Bondo's cybernetic arm and asks how he got it. Similar again to the anime, they realize they have a common enemy and Nana offers to team up, with Bondo refusing. She helps him to stand up and dislodges her arm, making him fall in the sand. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. With the services Skillshare provides, you can get access to many in-depth tutorial videos on basically anything you want to learn. Each class that they have is bound to help you with your creative endeavors. Do you want to learn how to make videos like this one? Do you want to learn how to write scripts or edit audio? Skillshare has you covered. And with our link, you can have a 14-day free trial. So what are you waiting for? Click the link now and get 14 days worth of classes free. Link in the description below. After she is taken in at the Maple House and meets New, she returns to the beach to see Bondo. He asks if she has found Lucy and she lies, saying no. A helicopter flies overhead and Nana panics, sensing Mariko inside. She begs Bondo to help her fight, knowing she'll die if she takes her on alone. He refuses on the basis that it's not Lucy, therefore not his enemy. Nana runs away angry, Bondo musing to himself that he doesn't have unlimited ammo anymore and can't afford to waste it on someone he doesn't care about. Mariko eventually finds out that Kurama has been taking care of Nana instead of her, his biological daughter. She attempts to kill Nana, but Bondo appears with a rocket launcher and shoots it between them. He shoots another rocket directly at Mariko, who stops it a few inches away from her face. Bondo uses his pistol to shoot the suspended rocket, causing it to blow up. He tells Nana and Kurama to leave the area, but Kurama stays behind for Mariko. He asks Bondo to take Nana away, both of whom protest. 
Bondo distracts her by saying there is onigiri on the ground and knocks her out when she looks. He throws her over his shoulder and runs off as the sat appears. Nana wakes up en route to safety and is given Kurama's tie by Bondo. She struggles free and runs back to where the fight happened. Kurama attempts suicide at some point and Bondo stops him, then takes him to the shack on the beach. One year later, Mayu is shown bringing hot food to Bondo on the beach. He makes a comment about not needing to rely on a young girl for help, and she jokingly tells him it's leftover dog food. He spits it out and yells at her before she says she's just kidding. He questions why she comes to take care of him, and she doesn't give a reason. She feels guilty for lying to him about Nyu and him staying in the cold weather to try to find her. She tries to convince him to leave the area and give up on searching since she hasn't been seen for so long. He convinces her to leave by telling her she will be late for school. He is seen picking up trash again with Mayu, who bows to him before she leaves. He shoos her away without saying anything. Mayu and Nana are at the house alone when a mercenary sent to kill Lucy breaks in. He attacks and assaults them, but Mayu runs away to the house phone. She makes a call to Bondo, begging him to come help them. He asks where they are, but before she can give him the address, the phone is smashed. Bondo arrives just as the man is about to shoot her in the head. He knocks him down with a powerful kick to the face. He tells Mayu that he remembered her mentioning the name of her home to him before he came by to check it out, claiming he wasn't actually there to help her. He tells off the man for doing this to them, who claims it was just a misunderstanding. Bondo responds by punching him in the face. The man crawls away and grabs a crossbow, shooting a spiky metal ball that releases neurotoxins into his abdomen. He informs Bondo that it is impossible to pull out and will kill him. With Bondo down, the man lets his guard down as he torments Mayu. Using his cybernetic arm, Bondo pulls the ball out, causing extreme pain, saying that pain was so unbearable that anything that happened next wouldn't affect him. Now out of ammo, the man again tries to say it was all a misunderstanding. Bondo throws the metal ball at the man, which sticks into his body and holds a gun to his head. Before he can shoot, Mayu jumps on him and begs him to stop. The man gets away, injured, but Mayu tells Bondo that Nana is hurt. She has two of the metal balls stuck to her body. Bondo uses a heated knife and alcohol to cut them out of her, saving a hospital visit where she would be questioned. Once she is taken care of, Bondo gives Mayu instructions to steal antibiotics from a hospital if she needs any. She asks about his condition and he tells her he will be fine and most of the neurotoxin has already left his body. Mayu thanks him with a hug, which flusters him. He tells her his debt to her is repaid and doesn't want her calling him again. As he turns to leave, Kota, Yuka, and Nyu come home. Upon seeing Nyu, he tells her his hatred for her and that he wants to be the one to kill her for everything she had done to him. Kota tries to defend her, but Bondo reveals her murderous past to him. He tells her that he wants to deal with her in another area, and she agrees to go with him. Bondo also realizes that Mayu has been lying to him and tells her he never wants to see her again. After discussing why Bondo is pleased she came with him, he reveals to her that he now knows the secret to her vectors. He also now carries a gun that can penetrate through them, hitting the Diclonius. The beach they are on is set up with traps he made specifically to kill her. He uses flash grenades to blind her and shoots her when she can't see. Before he can take her out, she's defended by the mercenary who attacked Mayu and Nana. He tells Bondo they need to let her live for humanity to evolve, which she responds to by decapitating him and throwing it at Bondo's face. Before she can kill him, Nana attacks her with a mace, saving Bondo. She, again, asks if they can team up to take her down, but he tells her he doesn't care about anyone else. He runs at Lucy and dodges her vectors before throwing one of the spiked metal balls at her. While in extreme pain, she's unable to use her vectors. Mayu returns to the beach to apologize to Bondo and witness their fight. He tries to get her to leave by saying he hates her, but she refuses to believe that. Lucy takes this opportunity to tear off his other arm. Mayu asks Lucy if what Bondo and Nana say about her being a murderer is true, and Lucy moves her vectors to kill her as well. Before Mayu is hurt, Bondo jumps in front of her, being torn in half at the waist. We get a brief flashback of Bondo's past, learning that he's always been a loner who solved his problems with violence. While he can never connect to anyone else, he decided that being strong and having everyone fear him was a good substitute. He never cared about anyone else and realizes no one will miss him if he dies. When he comes to, Mayu and Nana are by him, worried. Mayu asks why he protected her like that and he realizes he finally cares about someone enough to save them. He is blind again and asks what happened to Lucy. Nana initially tries to tell him the truth, but Mayu lies. She tells him that she's dead and that he killed her, wanting him to die with one less regret in his life. 
He tells her that she owes him the biggest favor ever, something he can't even think of that would compare to his sacrifice for her. Mayu kisses him, causing him to yell at her and ask if she's insane. She tells him she loves him, and that causes him to also realize that all he wanted in life was to have someone that would miss him if he died. They chat for a little bit before he closes his eyes and passes out. Nana and Mayu reluctantly leave, but Kurama shows up and stands over Bondo. When Mayu returns to the beach the next day, his body is gone. Bondo is presumed dead until the epilogue. Mayu is still cleaning up the beach in memory of him years later. She reminisces about him, wondering out loud if he would praise her. She tells herself he would never praise anyone, and he would say the beach looked terrible. As she starts to cry, Bondo appears behind her and says the beach looks terrible, but that she did a good job. He tells her she shouldn't have worried because he can never die. Mayu begins crying again and runs to hug him. A small piece of his leg can be seen, having been replaced with a cybernetic limb, implying most of his body is cybernetic now. So, as you can see, the anime cut out the majority of his story. The character in the anime is a cold-hearted killer with no redeeming qualities or any kindness in him. The character in the manga starts out the same, but even early on, he's shown to be human. In the anime, he doesn't want the surgery for pride, but in the manga, he doesn't want the surgery because he wants children. When he throws Mayu to the ground in the anime, he simply walks away, whereas in the manga, he hides to spy on her and make sure she's not hurt. The anime shows him being immediately aggressive towards Nana and not talking to her much. But in the manga, he's a bit more cordial with her from the beginning. His appearance in the anime is that of an older man with short brown hair and tanned skin. He's tall and well-built due to his combat training. He either wears a black soldier outfit or his civilian clothes, which are a red shirt with a dark red jacket and dark pants. He also wears sunglasses after returning to the beach from his procedures. The manga version is slightly different. He appears to be in his late 20s or early 30s, with spiked short brown hair and a pale complexion. His face shape is longer with a more prominent nose. His body shape is the same, tall and well-built. His normal clothes are a dark shirt with a green jacket over it and brown pants. He also wears sunglasses, but starts using them earlier in the story. His history is that he's a very skilled soldier for the Sat and is known for being ruthless and lethal. Despite being very valuable in combat, his bad attitude generally pushes other people away from him. In his past, he never connected to anyone and used violence for any situation that came up. Over the course of the story, he mellows out and opens up to Mayu, even saving her life on multiple occasions. There are early hints to his hidden kindness, such as wanting children, cleaning the beach, protecting Mayu and Nana, and stopping Kurama from killing himself and taking care of him. In addition to being the ultimate soldier, nothing seems to take him down either. Throughout the series, he suffers from having both arms ripped off, his eyes gouged out, and even being torn in half. He recovers from all of these with the help of cybernetic limbs and eyes. Thank you all for indulging yourselves in all this information thus far. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, there are a few more things I'd like to go over before the video ends. Firstly, if you're in the mood for some great storytelling, We the Celestials has got you covered. Our We the Celestials, My Hero Academia, and Naruto What If channels retell the story of their namesake anime with a twist. Check it out if you're interested. Secondly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details can be found in the description below. Lastly, if you're interested in what we do here at We the Celestials, then I'd like to extend you an invitation to join the team. The only caveat being that we only accept members from 16 years and up to join our crew. You can sign up for whichever category fulfills your interests by joining the recruitment discord using the link in the description below. We're always looking for members to join us. Well, that's it from us for today's video. So thank you all for watching and have a great day.